Who holds a cup of water like this? I'm the librarian. I'm librarian. And I came, and I came to, read. to read. Very important information, girlies. Very important. If you're watching this on Tuesday, just make sure that you're getting your ass over to ForTheCulturePodcast.com where another episode will no doubt have been released. Go on over there, get your life, listen to the episode, keep the movement going. Go to ForTheCulturePodcast.com slash contact and submit your emails, your messages, your questions, or your advertising inquiries, girl. ForTheCulturePodcast.com is where it's at, okay? I just want to let y'all hosts know that. Now, before I get into the topics at hand, I just want to let y'all know that I did end up seeing Miss Star Wars, okay, last year. She was that girl. Miss Star Wars was that girl. Now, I'm not going to spoil it for those who have not seen it, but what I will say is that I know that there have been a lot of negative press about it, kind of like backlash and stuff. And in all honesty, I, I still enjoyed the film. It was kind of long as fuck, but I would say that it's kind of like a transitionary film. It's like telling you all the tea before they get into the real life crazy ass action which will no doubt be the next movie but if you're wondering about this movie it's serving me second to last Harry Potter movie you know what I mean like the last one was that girl but the the one before that had to catch you up on all the tea so that's kind of what I equated it to but yeah if you're wondering about that yes I did see that as I said I'm not gonna spoil it but when Luke came out there and did what he had to do girl he did what he had to do Luke came out there and said girl <laughs> I'm just, that's all I'm gonna say. He did what he had to do, honey. A hit dog will holler, and Matt Damon is out here a roof, roof, roofing all across my goddamn timelines on social media. Okay, Matt Damon, girl, I don't know what the hell. I was over here pretending to be Jason Bourne, and you're, now you're on the chopping block. I'm, I'm just, I'm so sick of it. I'm so sick of it. Jason Bourne didn't deserve this. The best agent, you know what I mean? Trent Stone did not deserve this. You're going over here saying essentially, well, girl, we need to stop acting like there's not a difference between, you know, outright rapists and people who lightly pat you on the butt or some shit. I'm just like, girl, what are you talking about? What do you like somebody pointed out on Twitter like, girl, just because you have stage one cancer, bitch, and you don't have stage five cancer, bitch, you still have cancer, girl. You know what I mean? Like, it's still shitty. And, but this is what we mean by rape culture, Matt Damon, where you think it's like, oh, well, I'm bad and not too bad. If someone gives someone they don't know, they fucking grab on the ass. But regardless of all of those facts, if somebody did not come around here and ask you to grab their ass, what makes you think that I'm just gonna be like, oh, okay, you was just ass grabbing. You wasn't raping or anything. You was just ass grabbing. Like, girl, what are you? What are you talking about? And not only, even after the internet dragged his ass on that, he gave me an all lives matter ass rhetoric. He said, girl, we need to be focused on the men in Hollywood who are not out here raping, sis. That's who we need to be focused on. And to me, man, Damon, uh, you're giving me, you know, guilty as charged tease. That's what you, like, there's no reason for you to be this jumpy. you like, oh girl, y'all talking about me? <laughs> oh shit, no, let's talk about the people who aren't raping people. Ah, uh, let's talk about men who aren't raping men. Ah, uh, uh, what's going on here? I mean, isn't that a little ass grab okay? Matt Damon, you're starting to look a little sketchy now, sis. <laughs> you starting to look a little sketchy, girl. And it makes me wonder what's in what's in your closet. Fuck a wallet. What's in your closet? I wanted to bring up some cute political tidbits before we get into some deeper shit. Just uh, three cute ass points. Ed Coulter this week tweeted. This is what she fucking tweeted. We singles live empty lives of quiet desperation and will die alone. Now this is Ed Coulter. Uh, now Rubio is demanding that we also fund happy families with children who fill their days with joy. So now we're starting to unpack the reason why Ann Coulter is such a raging piece of shit. We, we're starting to analyze what went wrong in her life. Apparently she's suffering. She says, we singles live empty lives of quiet desperation. Do you know how you know how much suffering you have to be going through in order to make that suffering sound poetic? You were, uh, we lived empty lives of quiet desperation. I feel like I'm reading a goddamn novel. And Coulter, I don't know if you need to take your ass to a buddy group. I don't know what the fuck. Maybe you need to go play bingo with some old folks. But you are clearly lonely and pressed. And now we're all suffering for that shit. This tells me all I need to know about how you think about yourself. And it's very apparent in how you tweet the things you say and the fact that you're a racist ass bigot. Moving the fuck along to Miss Sarah Sanders' brick house shaped head ass. Sarah Sanders said we have a really diverse team. And now this was after all. Omarosa got the boot for Coon. I mean, after she finished doing her little tap dance, they gave her the motherfucking boot, told her to get her dark ass out of the fucking White House. And you know, so it's just like, I'm wondering what Sarah Sanders is seeing. She's talking about diversity. I'm looking over here. Okay, all right. I'm looking over here. Do you see, can, can you see the diversity in the fucking White House? Bitch, I have to play Dora, 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 the 
Explorer with her ass. Damn, I hit the fuck out of that note, bitch. I know my neighbors are fucking pissed at me every goddamn day, bitch, but we're gonna keep them all on. Anyway, but do I have to play Dora the Explorer with your ass? Do you see the motherfucking diversity in the motherfucking White House? Because I don't see it. Nobody sees that shit, girl. You tried it, Sarah Sanders, girl. And whoever your stylist is also tried it as well. The last point on these topics, Ajit. Ajit, Mr. FCC Commissioner. Uh, he was found. Apparently, Mia Khalifa, an adult actress, said, girl, you know, here are the receipts of him jumping into my DMs trying to take me out to dinner. Now, do you. Do what you have to do. All I'm saying is that, Ajit, girl, while you're over here getting off to porn and trying to, you know, chase porn stars, you want to shut down the internet so we won't be able to jack our own dicks while you're over here getting off. Okay, sweetheart? This is completely unacceptable. Now, I know a lot of you might not be in the K-pop, so you probably have no idea what I'm talking about but Kim Jong-hyun and he's from shiny he's in this boy band that is super huge in Korea he passed away and apparently it was a suicide there were a lot of signs on his Instagram he was posting some lyrics out his captions were kind of like alarming his sister apparently alerted author authorities that he planned on um, killing himself and I know a lot of times we only have these conversations when celebrities do it but you know being that I lost my best friend from suicide and I know how hard depression can hit the story really caught my attention and also the fact that a lot of this industry, well fame already is taxing on the human mind as we can clearly see from the years and years of evidence of that but also fame coupled with the fact that you're in these K-pop factories a lot of K-pop singers and a lot of K-pop stars are just like these contracts are crazy they have us doing all types of shit, I'm exhausted they're depressed in these situations and all they are to these big companies and labels, all they are are dollar signs so it's just, it's garbage all around and as I said it's so sad that you know these companies Conversations only happen once in a while and after it dies down mental health is yet again put on the back burner So I mean one way we can prevent this is just making sure that we're checking on ourselves and on our friends around us Don't let this conversation die out Just start with the people around you and they will be encouraged to do the same And that's how you can keep the movement going But I know with all of K-pop's problematic ass issues K-pop for a lot of people does kind of represent this freedom of expression And especially for me I loved how gender bendy the males were on stage and in a music video So it represented a a different type of industry, a new freedom in certain aspects. I'm, I know it has flaws. And so I know a lot of people are going to be heavily affected by the news of this since he is a huge celebrity. But mental health ain't no joke, honey. We have to stop taking it lightly. Girl, my main biney girl, let me show you this video. Let's just whip up the video, sis. She is skating circles around these holes, literally. I mean, she just left these hoes in the dust. Let me tell you something. She is a 17-year-old. She's originally from Ghana. Um, she's lived in Virginia. And she just became the first African-American female to make the U.S. speed skating team. Black women are out here yet again breaking records. Breaking records! And, and people on Twitter were, were joking. They were just like, you know what, girl? I don't know shit about skating, you know what I mean, girl? But if we're gonna take this shit over, best believe I will be in there cheering your ass on, says my mate girl. My mate Bonnie girl, she was skating around these eyes. <laughs> I mean, bitch, why did you hoes even bother entering into the race? No shade, no shade, y'all are talented. But girl, my mate girl, she got that black girl magic, girl. She was just zooming past you, bitches. <laughs> Girl, I hope you do well. I'm so happy to see you make the Olympic team. There is nothing but power and gold medals in your future. I see it. I see it. Great work. So now the news on this is kind of conflicting, so bear with me as we make it through this next segment. But apparently the Trump administration is prohibiting the CDC officials to use certain terms in their document. They're making sure that they're not using these following words in their next in next year's budget, okay? These, these words. A vulnerable entitlement, diversity, fetus, evidence-based, and science-based. Now those last two, well, the transgender one, evidence-based and science-based, I feel like, I don't know, I can't even choose the most dangerous ones because if you, everything has the, the potential, if you censor that shit out and you act like they don't exist, it's going to, it has a potential to be destructive, okay? I'm talking about totalitarian, authoritarian, dictatorship type of tease. You, I mean, if, once you get to the, you trying to censor the fucking CDC, girl, that's all fucking hope is lost type of tease, bitch. We need action on this shit now. And so I was very concerned when I saw the shit, but then I saw apparently the director of the CDC said the report is not true and we don't have a list of words that we're not allowed to use. And you know, she's saying all this shit and I'm just like, all right, girl, I'm hoping that that is the case. 
But I, with this administration, I only believe it if I see it. I'm just gonna be real with you on that. I only believe it if I fucking see it. And the way that a lot of these issues are going on right now, I mean, y'all didn't even want to send resources to Puerto Rico, bitch. We need the CDC, okay? To be as unbiased and just buy the books as, as possible. So I guess we'll keep our eye on this story and see what the fuck the T is, but that shit did not sound cute. I did not like reading that shit when it came across my motherfucking time. I was like, what the fuck? Dangerous territory. And speaking of dangerous territory, George Zimmerman's, you know, oom da, oom da. Head ass is walking directly into it. Apparently, George Zimmerman ass was very unhappy with, you know, Jay Z. He's working with a production company to go ahead and produce this documentary surrounding the events of Trayvon Martin and all that shit. So he is very upset about that shit. You know, he's just like, girl, you're contacting my family members, girl. You're asking them to be interviewed and shit, girl. I'm just fed up. And George Zimmerman said, you know what? He will beat up Jay Z and uh, feed him to alligators. That's what the fuck he said. Now, I want George Zimmerman to really sit his, you know, hard-boiled egg in the face, shake head ass down in a rocking chair real, and just rock back and forth slowly and really think. Think, do you really want this heat with Jay-Z? No, think about it. Think about it. I really want you to think, George Zimmerman, and you, right now you're still rocking back and forth because I want you to be soothed. I want you to be relaxed as you make this goddamn decision. You, you know, we gotta lean back even further just to, you know, help your ass out, help you think about this shit. Just do what you have to do, sis. I want you to rock back and forth your rocking chair, George Zimmerman, okay? And think about it. Do you really want this heat with Jay-Z? Is that something that you want? A, a certified hood-ass nigga from Brooklyn that fucking got goons that rubbish? Do you really want this fucking smoke? Oh, you dumb? Okay, that's what I fucking thought. Have a good goddamn evening with your goblin-shaped ass.